Gabler, how are you? How are you, brother? Good to see you. Fine, thank you. Um, you must be, how old are your feelings today? You must be on top of the world, and congratulations on your win. Oh, thank you very much, John. I appreciate you, buddy. Feeling really good. It was a it was a really fun season to watch in beautiful Fiji. It was uh, the way they did with the drones and all the cinematography stuff. I mean, it was really awesome. I want to go back there one day. I just want to stay in a resort. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have a, have, be able to enjoy the scenery a bit more. <laughs> for That's sure. right. With a buffet. Let me throw that in, too. Yeah. Now, you know, uh, c congratulations on your win. And you decided to, uh, the first time in Survivor history, you donated all of your winnings to charity. Now, that was fantastic. Now, unfortunately, most people can't do that. I mean, they, they have like me, I got a mortgage, I got a son and whatnot. Explain to people, because they may be wondering this, explain to people how you came to that decision, when you came to that decision. So uh, great question, John. So before the game even started, right. I was talking with one of my buddies who was in the military and my wife, and we were almost tongue in cheek, just saying, you know, if you win, why don't you do something big with the money? And instead of, you know, doing something for yourself, whatever, what do you think? And, you know, when we said it, we said, you know, that doesn't sound that crazy. It sounds pretty good actually. And, you know, I'm far enough along in my career and yeah. I, you know, to where, and I love my job. I love being on the heart team. I love what we do for patients every day. And so I'm going to keep doing that regardless. So, and then just to be blessed enough to be on the show survivor that we love, you love it. I love it. We all love it. <laughs> And, you know, that in itself is it's a huge reward. I mean, all the friendships you made, to me, it's almost like, you know, it was it was a pretty easy decision. But I did have that decision made with my wife before I went on the show. And I came back and I said, hey, darling, I hope you're still cool with what we talked about. Before we <laughs> because I did win and I did give it all away. And she was cool as she was, as you'd expect. She was awesome. Now explain a little bit about the foundation, the charity that you gave the money to and your involvement, because, you know, it's obviously really personal to you. Um, it really, it's really touched you on. You've done a lot of work with them. So I, I'm reaching out to several different cha veterans charities. Um, we created, I got with an, an accountant and a lawyer and I created this, this direct, uh, I'm sorry, donor advised fund called a DAF, D-A-F. It requires that every dollar put in there, every penny put in there. I can't even buy a potato chip with it. Right. Everything that goes in there must go to charity. So we've taken the the money just got wired in yesterday, and um, it's it's all it's going to be in the donor advised fund, and then we're going to donate that in lump sums to people in need. One of those charities will be you know Veterans Exploring Treatment Solutions. Uh, that is one of the one of the programs, which also Big Ben. Uh, survivor hero from a few few years back. Yeah, um, he supports them and works with them. So I've reached out to those guys a couple of times, and you know we're going to be talking more, hopefully very soon, with how we're going to collaborate. And there's a couple others as well that do good work for veterans. But the net net is we're going to take care of a lot of people with this money. Yeah. Now g going back to the game, um, you insisted that you wanted to play fire against Jesse. And which was a pretty bold move. Did you, at the time, are you thinking to yourself, like, this is the move I have to make? Is Was it a big part of your game to decide to have fire against him? And how did you feel going into it? You know, I'm glad I did that. I'm glad that I was able to, I'm glad that, that Cassidy selected me to make fire. Um, I was the fastest fire maker on the beach. Yeah. I was maybe the whole season but <laughs> I didn't really show it till the end uh, because there was really no need to Sammy was really good at making fire but and it actually kind of was one of the reasons why people were targeting him because as we got late in the game people were like well Sammy makes fire really well nobody wants to go up against him maybe we should take him out so I kind of kept that up my sleeve I'm an outdoorsman I like to do a lot of camping and hunting yeah. stuff so I'm familiar with fire so for me to go make fire I was very bullish on going to do it. Now that said, John, <laughs> fire in front of Jeff Probst is a whole, when you, when your wife depends on it, is a whole different kind of fire making. So I don't know if I was prepared for that, but you know, I just got in the zone wore my battle, my, my battle gear. And, uh, you know, Jesse made a fire too. Mine just got a lot bigger, faster. Now, you know, obviously you explained a lot of your game at tribal council of how, 
You know, you needed to go under the radar. You needed to pull back a bit to reduce that target. Um, where do you think you won the game? Was it at tribal council? Is that the feeling you got? Like as the tribal council progressed, did you think, hey, I really do have a shot at this based on the reactions you were getting from the jury? How did that go? You know, I, and maybe I was naive, but I, I felt pretty good going into tribal council that, right. I, was, that I was in the catbird seat. Um, I thought I was sitting pretty good going in there. Now, um, you know, making fire was a big splash at the end. I had won an individual immunity myself, broke a record. Um, and I, but I played a very good relationship game throughout. And I had relationships and alliances with literally every single person on that jury at one point or another. Yeah. So for me to be able to call out to them, like John, remember on day five, when me and you were doing this together, you know, and you're like, oh yeah, I do remember. <laughs> you know, Carla, when we did this, I mean, Carla asked one question. It wasn't on the show last night, but she was like, she goes, Gabler, how was your game better than mine? Because she played a phenomenal game. Yeah. Oh yeah. I looked, I looked her right in the eye and I said, Carla, you had one way to get to, when we were at five, you had one way to get to three. When we were at five, I had two ways to get to three. And she was like, okay. And I did. Because, you know, if I would have won, if I would have beat Cassidy, the the challenge beast uh, at that final challenge and won that, um, there was, I had, I talked with Jesse about taking him with me to final three and then me doing fire against Owen right? and then me, Cassidy and Jesse sitting there. And, you know, I, as good as Jesse has played as everybody had played, I really do believe that I had the jury votes up there to even go up against that beast because, you know, I think Cody's vote was up for grabs between the two of us. Sammy would have voted for me. I think, you know, Janine, um, Noel, I think that, you know, I think I would have still been a force. I mean, it may not have been a, a seven one, but right. I think it still would have been able to pull it off. Now for much of the game, I mean, uh, you know, like Owen and others, you were playing from the bottom in the sense that, you know, um, and that's a very different game to play than running with the majority or having all that back. How was it? Explain to people how it was, how it was to play that way for a lot of the game. Well, John, you know, that was the perception that I was playing from the bottom. Right. I was I was in the ride or die alliance with yeah. Jesse and Cody, and nobody knew about that alliance until Final Tribal. But we were this trio that no one knew about that was moving around throughout the game. So while I looked like I was an independent, I was really part of this group that was sliding between the Baca boys you know, Carla and, 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 and James and, and Cass, and we were moving around doing lots of stuff that nobody really knew about. And, you know, me, you know, I played with, I played the game, I think with a lot of humility in that I was okay with people underestimating me. Right. I didn't have to say, Hey, you're not giving me enough credit here. You are not, you know, uh, you know, I'm, I'm playing a bigger game than you're seeing right now. I didn't have to let anybody know that until the end. And I think that took patience. And, you know, even look at the Ellie, when Ellie and Janine went through my bag, I sat on that for 10 days yeah. before I dropped that. That is, that is a patient game. That is a strategic game until the right time, which was in the middle of a merge feast, when you have all these new people coming together, laying it out there. That was, um, that was a very key turning point in my game, I believe. Speaking of, of, you know, Ellie and Janine, I mean, obviously you, you discovered at tribal council who had really gone through your back. Looking back now, what do you think about that move and the whole situation? Because again, when it happened, um, you know, amongst fans, there was a lot of discussion back and forth about whether it was ethical to do that, whether it was not, should they change the rules? How do you feel about the whole situation and what happened now that you can look back? You know, it's just like you, as a fan, you look at it. It's not against the rules to look through somebody's bag. Right. It's okay to do it. But when you have cameras on you 24 hours a day, <laughs> one little bag that is your privacy area, uh, that is a violation. And I think that we all know that because that's why they were hiding it from, you know, they were quickly going through it and all that other stuff. And, you know, I, I could tell that somebody had gone through my bag when I went over there because I came back right. in the kitchen. My socks 
I'm very OCD. So I have, <laughs> I have my, in my sock, my tight tube sock roll tight like this. I had my, my advantage at the bottom and my shot at the dark at the top. When I came back, it was smushed and they were side by side. So I look over at Owen and Sammy, who looked like the cat ate the canary. <laughs> and I'm like, who was in my bag? And they both were like, I don't know. I don't know. And then when I walked off, um, Sammy came down the trail. It was like, Hey, Janine was in your bag. Ellie was in your bag with Janine. So I was like, okay, I knew it. But then also I knew I could trust. I knew I could absolutely trust Sammy at that point too. And then I gave opportunities for Ellie and Janine to come clean a couple of times. And every time they didn't, I knew, okay, I can't trust them. I need to make it to the merge. and I need to find my own way to the end at that point. Now, one other question I had, because they didn't really expand upon it on the show too much, but, you know, at the beginning of the game and then towards the end of the game, you weren't doing well and as far as health-wise was concerned. What was happening to you out there? Explain it a little bit how you, you know, it seemed like you had the game on one hand and then you had this other battle going on on the other hand that you weren't feeling well. What happened during all that? Maybe explain us and, and bring us into the story a bit. No, John, a great question. The, the first three to six days of Survivor are the worst. Yeah. So anybody listening to this that's going to get on the show <laughs> prepared for the first week on Survivor because you get there, you are tired, you are hungry, you are dehydrated, you're sweating like crazy, and guess what? You're delicious because you're still full of salt, minerals, and sugars. So the bugs, I had bug bites on my bug bites. And, you know, and then on top of all that, the jungle itself is a harsh environment. So my 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 boots on my feet, my feet were rotting off. I mean, it was gross. It was like all this, I was like falling apart. I was like, am I going to seriously make, I mean, 26 days, am I going to make it, you know, another two days? Right. But, you know, once I made it about six days in, a switch flicked and I just got stronger and I kept going. Now at the end, I, I didn't, you know, my last reward challenge was the peanut butter. Yeah. So I had gone about, you know, 10, 12 days with just a mouthful of coconut here or there, burning 3,500 calories a day. And yeah, I was a, I was very malnourished. I mean, I lost 38 pounds in wow. the game. I was 162 pounds when I came out of the game. Right. Wow. That's crazy. Well, Gabler, it was a pleasure talking to you today. Congratulations on the win again. and. Thanks, all brother. the good, all the good work that you're doing for people. I mean, especially you know during this holiday season when people, you know, we become a little bit more cognizant of, of the fate of others. It was really nice to see on the show that somebody like yourself was able to give so freely um, to other people. So congratulations on that, and again, congratulations on your win. Thank you, John. I appreciate you, buddy. Appreciate. Take you. care.